debate me and try to pull people from my church. Uh, let's see what happens, okay? Waleed. Hi, Waleed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I see that you're standing in front of our church. Yeah, I'm out here. Well, what does it say? Area. Will you die soon? Prepare to you face. You will die soon. Prepare uh, to face so God. What, 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 what brings you out uh, uh, to, to stand in front of uh, our church to, uh, I guess, protest? Yeah, the main yeah. thing. Okay. Wonderful. How you doing, man? Good. How are you doing? What brings you guys out here to stand in front of our church? The main thing that brings during, me out during church service. So I, I was in the area, and really I have a different sign which I normally bring to Christians, but I only had this one on me right now. And yeah, I've actually, talked. Let me, let me get my DGI, okay, so people can hear us. Yeah, fine. We're in the middle of a church service. So, yeah, no problem. What, so if what, you want, if you want, I can wait till you're done. I don't mind staying. Here. We we have an event today, so okay. I can't I can't stay long. So okay, no what what can I do for you? Yeah. So the main reason I'm coming out here is the mission whenever falsehood idolatry evil is being spread in society sure. it's our duty to calmly and peacefully stand up and call it out so the main idolatry that's spoken in this church is that Jesus is Lord Jesus is God you guys take Jesus as God I've spoken to a few members of this church Michael Casa another guy Andre Greenridge and I've had just hoping to have an opportunity to speak with you as sure, well sure sure so yeah. so my question is you know talking about idolatry why do you pray to a rock no I don't pray to a rock why do you pray to the direction of a rock I don't pray in the direction of a so rock. You don't pray to Kaaba. So I'm just to give you one thing clearly. Oh, I, I mean, do you pray to the Kaaba? No, I don't. Do you pray so, towards the Kaaba? No. So oh, I'm, you don't. Okay. No, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm a just like how you would probably say there's many false Christians out there, right? right? right, right. There are tons of false Muslims out there. Sure. Majority of Christians are astray. Majority of Muslims are astray. They have. I'm a Quran alone Muslim. Okay. I reject Hadith. I reject traditions that came after. All this rock worship, all this Kaaba stone worship, sure. this has nothing to do with the Quran. It contradicts it. And just like I'm outside the churches, I'm also outside the mosques protesting sure. these people yeah. for their idolatry too. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. So well, that's good. So where, so the Quran? Uh, what can you just tell me the, the the backdrop to the Quran, where it's coming from, and who was the yeah. prophet behind that? Yeah, the Quran is of course revealed by the Almighty to Muhammad to obviously confirm and ratify that original message of worshiping the Creator alone. Mm -hmm keeping his commandments, which is found in the Bible, sure. but then unfortunately in certain parts of the Bible it gets lost. Sure. So once we get to the New Testament, it starts getting a little confusing. I thought God was one, now I gotta worship this Jesus God man, and then I thought I gotta keep the commandments. Now Paul is telling me that, you know, this man died for my sins, and you know, we are not in the age of the letter, we're in the age of the spirit. So it gets confusing and the Quran ratifies the original. So what makes tradition. you think that the Quran confirms the Bible? Like, I mean, you know, like I understand that you have your belief, which yes. is fine. Yeah. You know, but how do you know and why do you believe that the Quran confirms Certainly. the Bible? So I'm coming from a place of studying. I have read the Bible cover to cover the Quran. I'm a seeker. I love studying these things. And so when I read the Bible, it contains a lot of contradictions. There's confusion, but I do see a general overarching tradition. The main emphasis in the Bible is worshiping the one God. Even Jesus himself, he stood on the law of Moses, the commandments of Moses. The first commandment, I am the Lord thy God, and thou shalt have the God's before me. And that is the main emphasis I see throughout the Bible. But then, again, you start to get into Paul, Gospel of John, it gets lost. So, when I say the Quran is confirming that, it's confirming the majority of what we see in the Bible, which is to worship but don't you, don't you think that your, your definition well. of what is confirming is now a tradition you've made at this point based on your bias? No. Well, no. because, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, it talks about worship of one true God, yep. but there are traditions as to why the Bible says what it says. Right? Well, the, the, so, the, so the tradition that you have about what the Bible means, this is your invention at this point. I mean, you don't even confirm the Sunni traditions of praying towards the Kaaba. Yeah, that stuff is all idolatry so, and against the Quran. So are you now like a self-proclaimed prophet that's saying no, that? No, so no, where no, are you no, getting no. your tradition is what? I'm getting it from reading the Quran and seeing what it says and also investigating other books. I've read the Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, sure. things like that, right? So that's my main thing. What I see in the Bible is a, uh, there's an overarching thing of worshiping sure. one God and we all can agree on that But then it starts to get loose in the New Testament. So the Quran is calling us back to that original thing right? Well, you know the so Bible like, has many overarching themes it, you know, There's an overarching theme about humanity being in sin There's an overarching theme about 
about salvation. There's an overarching theme about God sending prophets. I mean, you can't just pick one theme and say that that's the that's the full message based on your interpretation. No, right? not not the full thing, but it's it's a major plank. For us. Major it's plank. Like major plank. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that uh, uh, the main theme is the salvation through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. That's what I would say Paul and portions of the New Testament say, but certainly not in the Old Testament. So that's why it comes back to how do you know and why do you believe the Quran confirms the Bible? Because the Bible has a different tradition than yours. Okay, so, no, no. So I agree there are things the Bible teaches which are different from the Quran, definitely. When, and this is one thing that a lot of Christians, they get mistaken. They say, oh, the Quran says to refer to the Bible, refer to the Bible. It does not say refer to the Bible. It says refer to the Injil and the Torah. And the Injil and Torah are not what we have in the Bible. Do you have an Injil? I don't have an Injil. Do you I'm have a Torah? All, all, Do you have a Zabor? No, all I know is the Injil. According to the Quran's description, it was something revealed directly to Jesus. It's not Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's certainly not what Paul was saying. And same thing with the Torah, there was something directly revealed to Moses. And the Torah, the five books we have today, it records Moses' death in the past tense, so it possibly couldn't have been revealed to him. So, but this is the question, man. If, you, if you're saying something confirms something and you don't have it to prove that, then, I mean, you're, you're struggling. But so, the, the main reason, so this is one of the great mysteries that I ask myself, honestly, and I'm looking into it, right? I believe at the time of the Messenger, there were different books available than what we have today. What we have is this, and I'm not mean to be insulting, but a, no, largely, no, corrupt, yeah, a largely corrupted Bible. But when I say it's confirming, I say when I, let's just, let's say I'm a Jew. Let's say I'm a child of Israel. I grew up hearing that God is one. Here your Elohim is one. Your Elohim is one. The Ten Commandments, right? You know, keeping the law. Then suddenly I hear these guys like Paul coming in and saying, call this man the son of God. He died on the cross for your sins. He's right. God in the flesh. I'm going to be like, whoa, that's a little bit different to what I've been taught. Then the Quran, somebody comes with the Quran and says, no, 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 wait. Jesus was only a, another prophet of God. God is one Lord. You keep the commandments. That's right. going to be familiar to me. So I'm talking about that original tradition of accountability and the creator alone. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm a reasonable guy, brother. Yeah. But like, I mean... You know, when you got somebody saying they confirmed the tradition and they confirmed the books and here it is written before me, you don't believe in the Hadith, so I can't even quote Abu Dawood and uh, Muhammad himself saying, here's the Torah, I put my hand on it. I can't say it's anything a, like that. So, you know, like even, if I, even, if, I like quote, even if I quoted, you know, sources inside the Quran, like Muhammad saying, you know, go by the book that's revealed therein, you know, if you have any doubt, ask the people of the book. I mean, most Islamic scholars would say that they're was an actual Torah. There was an actual Injil at the time of Muhammad. Would you agree? The Torah, Injil at the time. Injil, Zabur at yeah, the time I, of Muhammad. Yeah, I believe at that time right. there were different texts available than what we have today. So, yeah. and it was confirmed then, but then all of a yeah. sudden it just which, dis which, it just yeah. disappeared. I'm and, looking and, into. And I'm, I'm trying to see because the Injil, at least, let's just think about this logically, right? Why? Let, let's say that. The Injil at the time of Muhammad that Muhammad is talking about the Quran, he made up the Quran, is the New Testament we have today. Right. The New Testament, in a lot of parts it agrees with the Quran, but in many parts it starkly differs from the Quran. Why would Muhammad be saying to these people, look in the Injil and Torah and you'll find proof of this Quran? Why would he be saying that if he knows that that's false? Clearly, there's more to this history than we've been led to believe. If I'm a false prophet, I wouldn't tell you guys, hey, refer to this book, which I know debunks me. This leads me to believe there was more assuming, text. You're assuming Muhammad is a true prophet, and that's your belief. No, no, I'm coming at it from, let's say, the false yeah. prophet angle, right, right? Right, right, If I'm a false prophet, let's say, and I want to co-opt the message of the Bible, mm -hmm. and I know the Bible doesn't mention, my name is Walid. It doesn't say anything about Walid. Why would I tell you, oh, look in the Bible and you'll see me in there? It's just, it seems silly to say that. Same like Joseph Smith. It seemed like a lot, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the, the Baha'i faith. I mean, people always say, quote these scriptures, and they pull out individual texts to confirm that, you know, what they believe. And like, you're, like you're doing right now, you're, you've made up your own tradition. You say, well, I see this in the Bible, I see this in the text, and this is the tradition that I believe that this is supporting. I mean, anybody can do that, right? I mean, with all respect, I mean, you're, you're welcome to stand out here and, you know, you are going to stand before God. And I want to ask yes. you a question. When you stand before God, where will you go? I, the Lord is the judge and not me, my friend. Right. The Lord why, is the why, judge. Do you, why do you believe that? Why can't you just say it from the book? No, I, I, I can say this. I have a confidence. I believe I'm going to go to the garden, to right. paradise. Because, you know, the Quran, it even says that those who believe in God do good deeds, believe 
believe in the last day, they, they need not fear nor regret. But ultimately, out of respect and honor of my Lord, I reserve the judgment seat for him. I can't say for sure, but I can say I am confident. And what is your basis for your confidence? The basis for my confidence is I have confidence in the doctrine of God to worship the Creator alone. I don't put any idols or anything before him. I put God first. That's the first and greatest commandment. And I do live according to his holy law. I'm a married man. And I'm not trying to boast of my righteousness, sure. but I'm a married man. I refrain from staring at women. I don't charge interest. I try to give charity to people. I live according to his way. Okay, God so, says that we need not fear nor regret. Okay, so you've perfectly lived according to your Not way. perfectly, not perfectly, but there is major and minor sin. The Quran says that God will forgive us. He, he has forgiveness, right? There's forgiveness of minor sins, like if you're a little kid, five years old, and you steal a packet of gum from the store. It's not like murdering somebody, right? I live according to the major commandments of God. And, and, so, I, and I trust my Lord's forgiveness abounds. Right. So you're, so the forgiveness is what you're depending on in order to get into paradise. Yes. And that's it alone. Forgiveness. Right. Forgiveness so, and living by the law. So the mercy of God. Yes. Because well. you don't perfectly live by the law. I live by the major commandments. Yes. Right. I but it's, it's mercy that's the primary foundation. It's mercy. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what we believe, brother. Jesus is the mercy of God for us. Just like you depend on the mercy of God, that's the only thing that can give you to your entrance. It's the same thing with us. The only difference is we believe it was revealed through Jesus. So, so brother, I mean, if you feel that you have the mercy of God outside of a sacrifice, outside of the, someone paying the penalty for your sins, if, if you believe that, I mean, you know, we're going to stand before God on that day, right? Yeah, and God will reveal and we, us the truth. And we believe that somebody died for us. Yeah. So, 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 so what's the problem? So I just wanted to quickly say this regarding, you know, the, the conversation we were having before about the original tradition and whatnot. What I'm talking to people about when I'm on street preaching in downtown Toronto, I'm saying worship God alone, worship God alone. We know this works because we know there are men who existed before Jesus who were saved. Moses, Abraham, whatnot. They worshiped the Creator alone and they were saved. It's the Christians who are coming in and inventing a new religion by saying, now we need this go-between to get to God, which none of the prophets of old that went through but this go-between. You're telling so me right you're now, but you're telling me right new. now that you have a go-between. You just told me that. No, go-between by meaning I have to go between this human to get to God. No, no you're, you're going between a concept I'm going between a living concept. That's the only difference. The living concept was revealed, and you're going through a concept too, which is mercy. You right. require mercy. There's no, there's no way that you can come directly to God outside of His mercy. Let me, let me word that a little more clearly. So what I mean to say is that we know that there have existed men in the past before Jesus who called on God alone and not Jesus' name, and they were saved. So we know that what, what I'm is, saying. What is Jesus? I guess it's in Arabic. What does it mean, though? Jesus, I'm not sure. What, what do you mean, like, like the, the translation the of his name? name? Yeah, I mean, you should know this if you're going to preach, right? Isn't it Emmanuel, God with us, or something like that? It's a different name. Emmanuel, I'm not sure what Jesus means. Though. I know Christ is Messiah. Do you, do you know what the word Ingeo means? Ingeal, I they say it comes from the word Evangelion. What does it mean? Evangelion, God knows best. Come on. No. Here's the thing. You're, you're, no, but, but you're preaching about something you don't even know the meanings yet. Right. Well, do you, you know? Can, okay. Do you know what the word Christ means? I know that it means Messiah. What does that mean? Christos, Messiah. What does that, it mean? That means the prophesied man who was promised to the children of Israel. No. Yes. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, the that's who he is. But what does the word mean? Messiah, Messiah, Mashiach. Well, what does it mean? Mashi Mashiach. It just means anointed one. Mashiach. Okay, good, good, good. There you go. Chosen one. So. He's and there are the multiple Mashiach okay. spoken of in the but in the Old Quran, Testament. no, 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 in, in the Old Testament. Okay, but why only one in the Quran? Well, there's one that's emphasized, which is Jesus. Okay, so yeah, there's Asa. so there's one that's emphasized in the Bible. Why is he emphasized? Well, I mean, I have to ask you. What, what do you mean? Why? Because is he, you he's, said there's only one in the Quran. One spoken of in because, the Quran. And you said because he's emphasized. And I yeah, agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And because there's one there's one in the Bible okay, that's yeah, emphasized. Yeah. So, but so, why is Christ emphasized as the anointed one? Because he's an incredible and major prophet of God. But why is he the only anointed one that's emphasized? God knows best. No, I mean, God he's explaining why. That doesn't, that doesn't mean no, no, he's I'll, God. No, no, I'll explain why. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, it, it comes into the meaning of his name. And what does that mean? You have to tell me. God saves. God's I, salvation. I believe that. God right. saves. So right. he's anointed for God's salvation. He's the only one anointed for that. 
Interesting. And on top of it, you don't know the meaning of the Injil. Do you know what that means? Injil, Evangelion. What I'm, I'm looking into that. I'm looking into it, that right it, now. It means good news. So Jesus Christ is the only one anointed to bring the good news and the only one the anointed. The gospel means good news. Right. Which is he So he's Especially the only the one anointed and he's emphasized to bring the good news and to bring salvation. That's why he is the bridge. Yeah, and I'm, the, the, the question I so, have so is, that I mean, you, you, your Quran explains this, like in the in the meaning of the names, and that's that's why. Well, that that's an assumption. That's no, an assumption. no, no, no. Because the word, the word Injil in the Quran doesn't mean good news. If I'm not mistaken, the word good news or glad tidings in the Quran is Bashar in Arabic. Okay. But Injil is coming from where? The Injil was something coming given directly to. That, that, that that's the... an assumption. Okay, it's, it's not coming from the Arabic. That's an assumption. It could very well come from the Arabic. Are you serious? I'm serious. Jesus didn't speak Arabic. I'm serious. God knows best. God so you think best. Jesus spoke Arabic? I'm looking into this historical question right now of what the original language of the prophets was. Now, here's, here's my point, right? Brother, brother, but even, even in the Quran, no, but brother, these are non, these are non No, no, but it's not because even in the Quran, we know that it clearly says that he came in their language for the Arabic people. No, it's right. saying that he came to the children of Israel. And what the children of Israel spoke at that time, God knows best. This is a very hairy subject. I'm looking into the history right now. I'll, 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 I want to get back to the theology, though. This is my main point. I, I just... Do Christians not Would you like see... to... Okay, just because of time, because I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, in the middle okay, of the no service problem. and I'm preaching. So okay, I yeah, came yeah. out here out of respect. No problem, so, thank you. So, I, so what I would suggest is, is before you maybe talk about something, well, get to know your terms a little better, especially if you're going to... Listen, we... No, no, hold on, hold on a second. Especially if you're going to, like, bring up Jesus and the Bible. And if you're looking into everything, why don't you look into it first? And then we can have, like, an informed dialogue. Or what you can do is you're more than welcome. I invite each one of you to, to sit and, and listen. There's no idols in there. I'm going to be sharing. Well, okay, it's idolatry. But you're standing in a world full of idolatry. You're standing on a... You're standing on a, a, a place that perhaps this person worships idols himself. But this house is specifically dedicated to not, worshiping of Jesus. Well, it's, it's okay. It's it's, it's 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 dedicated to the mercy offered by the one true and living God, the Father. So if you want to give it a chance and, and at least listen, you're more than welcome. If not, I I, I gotta preach. Okay, so, I'll, I'll let you go right now. Okay. But I quickly want to say this that I have studied into this, and just because I don't know a few of the answers to the trivia questions you gave me doesn't mean I haven't studied, right? Now here's the thing. I just want to end with the Quran. It puts a challenge forth for Christians, where those who are do, do you think that you could maybe be wrong or that you're 100% certain that Jesus is the Son of God who died for your sins? I am 100 convinced, 100 percent convinced you are not that wrong there's on one that. true God and there's only one way and it's through Jesus. Okay, and that he's the Son of God who died in the cross Son of God who died for sins. And are you one of the percent convinced that Muhammad is the final prophet? I am 100% convinced he is the final prophet and I am 100% convinced that God has no son. And God cannot have a son because he has no consort. So, what the Quran says is, let us call our men and your men, and our women and your women, and say, let us invoke the curse of God on whichever one of us is the liar. Brother, the curse That's is already on you, man. The curse is upon it's you. All, no, are it's you all, no, it's already... No, are, I'm, you, I'm are, telling you re are you ready to say that? I, are you ready I, no, to I'm invoke? Not, no. I say, may, if, if, God, if I am brother, denying your son right now and you have one, may the curse brother, be upon me. The curse are, is are you already on you. The curse is already the curse upon is on, me? You know why? Because you're a sinner. Are you confident enough to say the word? Brother, I'm not going to say anything. So you're not confident enough to take the oath? because I love the Lord and I'm not gonna curse you and I'm not gonna curse any I'm telling you you all you already have a curse on you because you're a sinner and if you don't have salvation through Jesus Christ you're already cursed that's have, what the Bible says you have to account for all the people so, who made right. their way to the Lord before Jesus even right. existed well that's the original would you like to would alone. you like to listen and then we can d dialogue for a bit after yep. because I, I have to preach I'm I'm beholden to the principles of my faith okay I'm so you want to stand out here no, i'm not allowed okay. in but i'd be willing to wait for you to come out uh, yeah okay what, what time do you plan on coming? well right today i have an event right after so i can't even spend too long but if you want to come in and listen a bit that's that's fine you know and at least maybe i have a question and answer period in the middle of the service so that's a that's a great opportunity for you the main thing is I, I'm, I'm saying yeah, i mean yeah. if you wanted to ask a question in front of the entire church on live stream we will have that in the middle of the service but I gotta run. Okay. Okay. So okay that's I'll, a, I'll, I'll consider that's that. something. For you. I'll consider okay. It. Okay. Okay. Guy doesn't even really know his stuff, like. So it's kind of funny, but. Uh, 
Let's see if he comes in. That would be a great idea, you know, to see if he'll come into the church and, and he can ask whatever question he wants. Anyway, God bless you. Got to get back to church. All right. Peace be upon everybody here. I know I'm a new face here, so I might as well introduce myself. My name is Walid. I'm 23 years old. I'm a Muslim. And actually, I'm joined by my two brothers here, Brother Tristan and Brother Kenneth. And they left the Christian church for these very reasons. I'm a married man to a beautiful, God-fearing woman. We expect to have our child this next summer coming, God willing. And the main question I had for Pastor Lynn is, so Muslims get a lot of bad rap. They Christians, they seem to think that Muslims are inventing a different religion. The Quran is bringing something completely new. But all I have to ask is, so we know that men have been saved in the past and not called upon the name of Jesus Christ. We have this. We have Moses. We have Abraham, men who existed before. So all I have to ask you is, who is really inventing the new religion? The guy who is calling upon his Lord alone and keeping the commandments as the prophets did, or the person who's bringing in this new name and saying that's the only means of salvation? That's my question. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. You know, when you when you look inside the Bible in the book of, um, in the Hebrew text, every time, uh, most of the time when salvation is mentioned, if you look in the Hebrew, it's, it's, a, it's a derivative or a form of Yeshua. And Jesus' name was Yeshua. So the word salvation or the salvation that was revealed was always there, even from Abraham, as Jesus said, you know, Abraham, um, uh, uh, before Abraham was, I am. The Bible says that Abraham was visited by Jesus, the king of righteousness, Melchizedek. In fact, Abraham paid a tithe to Jesus, according to Hebrews chapter 13. As well, we see that in the book of Genesis. We see Jesus Christ right in the book of Genesis, walking in the cool of the day. And if you look in the Greek, it's the word of the Lord was walking in the cool of the day. So Jesus in, in Theophany appeared many times, even to the prophets, even to Moses. Jesus said Moses spoke of Jesus Christ. So the, we believe that the prophets had a revelation of the coming Messiah. That's why they prophesied over and over about this coming Messiah. And that's why Jesus is the only person called the Messiah mentioned in the Quran. He's uniquely mentioned as that because he was foretold he was to come. By who? The prophets. Prophet Moses, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah. You can go down the list. All of them knew that this Jesus Christ was going to be the bridge between God and man. And he was the salvation to come. And his name is actually recorded in the Hebrew over and over and over. So. Um, yeah, when people have a new traditions or come along with a tradition saying it fits within the tradition of scripture, I mean, everybody's entitled to believe what they believe. It just, is it true? And that's where the debate comes. I mean, Muslims and Christians have been debating for 1400 years about this, right? And the onus of proof and really is kind of in, in the ball court of the Muslims to, to come and present uh, a kind of a confirmation to their text. Because we have confirmations to our text. We have 66 books within our Bible, most Bibles. I mean, there's a lot of other Bibles that have maybe more books, but each of them confirm that Jesus Christ was the prophet to come, was the Messiah to come, was the one who died on the cross for us. You know, so we have that confirmation and it's from different sources. Even the Jews that don't believe in Jesus, we can take their Tanakh, their Torah, their, their Zabur, their texts, and when we put it alongside our Bible, we see it still speaks of a, sac a necessity of a sacrifice to reach God. It speaks of the same prophecies that we have in our Bible. And that's why we take those texts and put it with our Bible. We don't, we don't make any difference between the two. So for us, that's proof that the testimony we have about Jesus is actually legitimate. When you have something that comes up and says, you know, we are the legitimate text, and we confirm the previous ones, and there is no text to back it up. I mean, now it's, it's arguing from silence, right? And so, you know, everybody's entitled to pick something from the Bible and say, well, they believed in one God. I don't believe anything else it says, but they said one God, and I believe in one God, therefore we believe the same thing. I mean, it's great that you believe in one God, but there's more to the story. 
So may I add one more point to that? Sure. So the main thing I want to say is, so I know there are more obscure, mysterious passages throughout the Bible, which people say is kind of a mentioning of Jesus. So I know some people, I don't know if you believe that, but the angel of the Lord and things like that. Sure. These are secret appearances of Jesus. And all I have to ask is, does that not seem strange to you? God has a son a son that has existed from the beginning, who is God in the flesh, and God would not explicitly mention it in the Old Testament. By the way, here is my son. He would only tease us a few times, tease us about this son, while also telling us he's one, commanding us to worship him alone, and then all of a sudden kind of switching the nature and saying we have to worship through the son to get to him. Does that not seem like a deceptive God who is throwing us off regarding our doctrine? No, actually, you know, right from the beginning, we see that God did reveal that he, his nature is complex. Right from the creation, he says, let us make man in our image, right from almost the first chapter of the Bible. So it's, it's not some obscure thing. In fact, when you look at the Jewish traditions in the Talmud about the coming of the Messiah or, you know, any, any prophetic text, it's very clear that there was somebody or something that was extended from God that is acting on behalf of God that is God or, or reveals God. In fact, even as a Muslim or any religious person, you need something that manifests in the tangible in order for you to reach the intangible. There's no way even yourself can reach an unseen, unknowable God unless there's something manifested or revealed about that God. And to be honest, if you're honest with yourself, the only way you can worship an unseen, unknowable God is through the revelation of that unseen and unknowable God. Am I right or wrong? Through the word or are you talking about a human go-between? It's not about the human. It's about your revelation. How can you worship a God who's beyond creation whom you never seen, you never heard, that can't enter into creation, how do you worship that unless you, you're worshiping so, uh, that through something that was revealed to even explain that? Well, I would say... Uh, I, I, so yeah, so, okay. so let, me, let me just establish a point. Do okay. you believe God is beyond creation? God is outside of creation, yes. The believe, only uncreated being. Do you believe God can step into creation? God cannot step into creation, okay. no. Do you believe God can reveal himself in creation? Yes, God does give scriptural revelation, 100%. Aha, uh -huh. so you're worshiping God through that revelation. The difference is, I no, am... Is that, is that true or not? No, no, no. So God, not only through revelation, but I believe we all can testify to this. We all know inside of ourselves that there's a created being there. So it's not just revelation, but an innate well, how do sense you of know? our created being. you know name. everybody's heart? Right. Well, I know because... Even when I look out into the world, I can very clearly see evidence of intelligent design. And just the fact that every single human being, we try to seek purpose in life, purpose. This leads me to think, okay, who installed that purpose within me? So there are many proofs that lead us to God, scriptural revelation, and also innate nature of man. Okay, good. So you're worshiping the God that you've never seen, never heard through proofs. I, I'm, not understand no, I'm not understanding the question. It's not a question. It's a statement. You, you said you've never seen God. He can't enter into creation, yes. correct? Correct. But somehow you know about this God through proofs within creation. Proofs, yeah. So, proofs. which means that you're worshiping God through your proofs. This is very different to what the Christians say. So, oh, wait, uh, just just clear, make sure that I that I'm on the right track yeah. with you. Is, is that what you're saying to I, me? No, it's not about a man or anything. It's just, are you worshiping God? directly because you don't know him you haven't seen him or are you worshiping through what was revealed or the proofs that you have about this god who's never stepped into creation the proofs give me evidence of god but i worship god directly so for example one proof is i just look at the flower the beauty of the flower the way it's designed i don't worship through the flower i don't worship in the name of the flower as christians worship in the name of jesus so these are two different order concepts that you're no, you conflating you, okay no no it's, it's not the it's the same concept oh no brother 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 oscar oscar i'm the one answering answering the question that's fine. Brother, Oscar, 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 he's asking me. I'm the pastor, okay? Uh, look, it's really good questions, right? But let's face it, man. 
Has God ever spoke to you? Not directly, no. Okay. How do you know the voice of God? I don't hear the voice of God because I'm not a prophet. How do, and there, you know, and how do you know the voice of God? I don't know the direct sound of the voice of God because he's not ever spoken to me directly. So, so how do you even know that you are worshiping God? I know I'm worshiping the creator because, again, I can see that there's an intelligent mind behind this universe. And I submit myself to the creator alone. The creator who's spoken of all throughout the world in every tradition. Everybody knows that God exists. Everybody knows that there's one God and one creator. I simply submit myself to him, the uncreated being. So, so you, you have a concept or a belief. You're placing your belief in the proofs that that proof means God, but God has never stepped into creation. You have never heard the voice of God. You're assuming based on what you see other people say they believe in God, but they're all basing it on a revelation because God has never stepped into creation, correct? So, so all that means, brother, listen, all that means, just using your logic, is that there's something revealed about God, an intermediate between the unseen and the seen. There's something there that, that gives you the ability to say, yes, there's a God. And it's through that image, I, what might I say, or revelation, that you can say there's a God. And, and, and that's why, brother, Christianity is the right way, because Jesus is that image of the invisible God. Jesus is that revelation, that word, that tangible reflection of the unseen. And this is why, brother, you need that in order to worship the unseen God. You need that revelation. We need that Jesus Christ, that word of God that was revealed, that thing about God that was revealed in creation. We need that to know that there's one true living God. So, we might be saying it in a different way, um, but this is how we're saying it. And this is why the testimony of the Bible is true, because it reflects this truth. It confirms this truth. And the more I press you and ask you about these truths, it, you're saying the same thing. You just don't realize it yet. And, and that's why, brother, I, I invite you to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to Jesus Christ who revealed the one and true living God for you. You might not understand all the nuances about uh, how God can become a human or, or whether or not he did or didn't. You might not understand that, but you do understand that in order to worship that one God, it's through a revelation about that God, whether it's through the Quran, the word of God, but we know God is bigger than a book. We know that, I mean, if, if I were to press you, how do you know? If, if, if God can't enter into creation, then how is he speaking to prophets? How did his word even get into creation if he can't even somehow bridge into creation? Right. So the Quran, it says there are multiple ways in which God does reveal and inspire men. Reveal. And one of, those, one of those ways is through angels. It doesn't mean we worship through the angels or through the prophets or through these people. The books like the Quran like parts of the bible they're signs pointing to the creator we don't we don't worship in the name of any created thing. you worship God and, and, through and, the signs you you may not say you work you see brother this is this is all this is all word play here because no angels are not god brother neither is a human okay so who are are you worshiping an angel or are you worshiping god? god how do you know how did those angels who are created beings even talk to god or know god since god can't enter in in any way into creation how so this is knowledge of the unseen and even the quran denies the messenger muhammad knowledge of the unseen he said if i have knowledge of the unseen i'd have untold riches so i don't know how things go on in the unseen level but just to give some context so I am a man who studies all different kinds of faiths, all different kinds of religions. Mm -hmm. I'm joined by two brothers in the faith who were once Christians. This concept that God would come down in human form to mediate between us and him, this is not a unique doctrine to Christianity. The Hindus believe the exact same thing. They believe that Krishna is the living God coming down in flesh to be the light of the world, to mediate between us and God. This is a common 
pagan doctrine all over and, the ancient and, and world. And animists also Krishna, were, Christ. Animals also pray to rocks just like Muslims do. I, I do not I pray mean, to a rock. No, that, that goes no, against the Quran. You don't, Quran. but a billion other Muslims do. So what I'm saying is like you can you can see commonalities in a lot of religions everywhere. I can say Buddhists worship an unseen force just like you worship an unseen. Are you Buddhist now? I mean, like the point I'm trying to make, brother, without getting into a long debate okay. about stuff, because I do got to preach a message, sure. and I'm answering your question, yeah. is you're worshiping your one true God through a revelation. These angels, how do we even know they heard God anyway, since God can't enter into creation or or they haven't seen God anyway? Who has seen God? You said it's, a, it's if Muhammad even knew God, which he does. So why am I going to take the, the, the words of a prophet who doesn't know God? I, I never said oh. that Muhammad doesn't know God. Has he, has he heard Mo God Muhammad, directly? Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad was denied. No, he was revealed through an angel okay, that so was he, sent from okay, God. Okay, so the final prophet never heard God directly. Has he ever seen God? Nobody can see okay, God and live. So he hasn't seen God. He's never heard God. So why in the world? Even the Bible says you okay, can't see God and live. Okay, but so why in the world? Would I want to follow a guy who's never seen God, who's never heard God's voice, and yet he has the final revelation from a mysterious angel that, according to your theology, has never seen God or known God either because God can't enter into creation. See, that's the problem and conundrum of, of your theology. It leads you to a dead end, which, why, which is the reason why there's no power in Islam, we see, I just met, mentioned testimonies. God is speaking prophetically today. He is healing people today. And it's through the name of Jesus. The reason why is because our God does enter into creation. He does tangibly reveal himself. And he does it over and over. In fact, he can even live within your heart through the Holy Spirit. Whether you accept it or not. Because if you don't, brother, you're... You're worshiping something that doesn't exist because if God doesn't speak, that you don't know him, he can't enter in. Brother, you're worshiping an unknown. And might I present to you and, and invite you to a God that has been made known. His name is Jesus Christ, brother. And he one, loves one, you. One more thing. It's okay. It's okay. Just, just to it's kind okay, of, okay. yeah, I don't want to take up the no, entire no, 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 thing. No. I know you have Last to Last question well. so that I can yeah, get into yeah, the Yeah, so yeah. I would just invite every single one of the congregation members here. It won't hurt you. Just take a read of the Quran. And when, when I say I'm a Muslim, I am very, okay. very different to the majority so of people respect, who call themselves so respect, Muslim. Guys. Very, very different, right? Just as you guys would say there's a ton, ton of false Christianities out there, I would say there's a ton of false Islams out there that deviate away from the Quran. Just give the Quran a read. Pray to God for guidance and from there make your decision because in my experience and my brother's experience, the Quran makes far more sense than the Bible. The Bible is, Bible is filled with discrepancies and contradictions. It's multiple books from multiple time periods in multiple conditions. And I know every single one of you in reading the Bible, you have tons of questions. Just give the Quran a read and I would invite that to you to worship yeah. the creator of all. Yeah, no, no, hey, hey, brother, brother, Oscar, Oscar, please. Like, guys, like, why, uh, there's no need for this emotional stuff look guys hey hey brother thank you thank you for your question no honestly you're you're no no op, and we always will welcome you brother because you know these these questions are valid questions and they and they do need to be answered and 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 uh, and we thank you you know the reason why we we don't receive um some things and we receive others is because some have testimony and verifiable confirmation to it like i said earlier the prophet's words we put it inside it it, it confirms we still have it today we believe it even the jews that don't believe in the messiah or the new testament we have their books inside of our bible and and it says the same thing you know so so you know but but when someone's telling me that the prophet has never heard the voice of god he has not seen god um and that you can't encounter counter encounter god directly and then god can't even enter in at all then and brother that just leaves a person reading a book that is already from the from the face from the start saying that they can't really encounter god because he's never entered in so 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 i thank you for that that offer and it's always good to learn but uh, you know but I, if i answered your questions thank you i, I do got to move on yeah a amen so let's give him a big hand hey, thank you thank you thank you yeah 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 oh 
Hey, no problem. No problem. Thank you so much. Amen. Come on. Let's encourage, encourage him. Thank you.